Oh, Jesus. You know, there is one praying long does. It develops your consciousness. Hallelujah. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of six, seven, eight hours, nine hours of prayer. But there's something that long prayer does is that it develops your consciousness. You see, there's what we call repetition and there's what we call vain repetition. Scripture only advises against vain repetition, not repetition. And I do that again. Scripture never advises against repetition. The Bible says, he has said so that we may boldly say. That means repetition is a law in the spirit. Hallelujah. The fact that you repeat yourself, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. It doesn't mean you are wrong. Vain repetition is repeating something that has no substance. But the essence of repetition is to arouse your consciousness. Into, that's why sometimes if you come here, you realize that we sing only one part of a song. It's not like we don't know the rest. We, actually, if you've been in my meetings, I will just take one song. Give me one song, one song, any song, any song, any. It should be a bank of songs, any song. Yahweh, Yahweh. What's the other part of that song? What's the other part of that song? How many keys are happening here right now? What's, what's, what's that the part of your second part? I'll be the same. I've touched your grace. Now, if you hear us sing that song here, we'll almost never go into Yahweh. We'll almost never go into Yahweh. We'll just, yeah. Um, what's the song again? I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life has changed. I will never, I will repeat it and repeat it and maybe up to 470 times. And the reason for repetition is not because we don't have another song to sing. Oh God. But what happens through repetition is that we arouse our consciousness. And I was telling my brother this morning, consciousness is the highest currency in the spirit. I'll say it again. Consciousness is the highest currency the spirit. I said that consciousness is the highest currency in the spirit. Don't forget, I'm going to be teaching you from within today. For those who were in the meeting on Tuesday, God just gave us a direction. What song we're singing on Tuesday? Yeah? Let's do it two minutes. Obed, go on the keyboard. Two minutes. Two minutes. Yahweh is inside of 
Consciousness, just maintain your consciousness. Inside. Hallelujah. Sit down. Let me teach you a little bit. Obed, you can stay on the keyboard. Just amen. Who can feel it? It's like a, it's just a, it's a cloud. It's there. We can basically just keep going. It's been an hour just praying, but we must teach. Hallelujah. Please look up. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please put on your hand together for our procedure. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, you know, I was telling you guys last week of scripture says in Colossians that we may comprehend together what is the height, what is the depth, what is the breadth and to know the love of God that, that passes knowledge. That means each to each one of us is giving a dimension. That's what it simply means. That we may comprehend together what is the height, what is the depth, what is the breadth and to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. So that means God has distributed himself in dimensions and given to everyone a dimension. That means if you are in this place, you would naturally feel what you can add to the atmosphere. Amen. That's why when Paul was giving the recommendation of the New Testament church, he says, let everyone come with a song, with a psalm, with a hymn, with a prophecy, with an interpretation. We need need a projector. Let it not be as if I'm quoting what is not in the Bible. Let everyone come with a psalm, one with a psalm, one with a hymn, one with a melody, one with a prophecy, and another with an interpretation. That means the, the idea of the New Testament church is not for one person to hold the mic and everybody listen. That's not true. You are not here to, it's not an entertainment where you sit down and then somebody entertains you. If you've been in New Nation, you realize that I mean, when we used to have more meetings that are in-house, this one can just stand up and say, thus says the Lord. This one can stand up, raise the song. This one can stand up, raise the song. And that's the order of the New Testament because in John, it was not John, Ephesians chapter 4, he says it is one God, one hope, one baptism, one faith. The same God that is in you all and walking through you all. So if it is the same God that is inside me and the same God that is inside you, it means that there must be what is called a witness. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to see our apostle in church today. Our apostle temple out, out where. He's the temple of the living God. Hallelujah. Good to always see him. I've still, I'm yet to still see your wife. Where is she? Has she left you? 
Is she still with you? <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember I was telling you some years ago that you arrived at this hair. Remember I was telling you, this is two years ago. He said, no, never. You can never. You can see that the word of the prophet comes to pass. You were there, right? I told you, this is your hair. You will come to a point. You will just wake up. And it will be out of no compulsion. Because I told you, if God compels you, you will comply, but you will never choose. So what happens is that God will, God will never bring his sovereignty upon your choice. If God compels you, out of his sovereignty, you might want to comply, but it will never be your choice. But the idea of God is that he presents his sovereignty as a suggestion, and then you, out of your choice, you comply. Hallelujah. So I told him, sorry, I just preached out a necessary digression. I told him that he was going to arrive at this point, but he refused to comply. But now you have chosen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Very handsome young man. Hallelujah. Sometimes if you see me wear any kind of rugged shoes or rugged clothes, he's the one that gave it to me. There's one cloth I wore for one of my podcasts, the one I did with Kenzie, with the, my chest was open like this. It's the one that gave me the clothes. I can never buy such a thing with my money. Hallelujah. <laughs> but sometimes you can spice it up. He's an amazing guy. Good to see him in church. You, you must have come to church with a lot of mind today because police is everywhere. You must have come really desperate for something. <laughs> May God meet you where you are in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. It's been an amazing year. This is our, this is second month, right? We're meeting here. First month this February. So this is about the seventh week we've been here. And God has been awesome. I mean, the teachings that protrude from this altar are teachings that are timeless. No pun intended to David O. But these are teachings that are timeless. I tell you the truth. They are teachings that are seasonal, that are necessary for a season. But if you understand the teachings we give here, they are stretching the I'm the dextrosity of the word of God. Sorry for being verbose. It's, I'm, I'm trying to explain something, but that's the only way I could, I could do it. And that, to be ambidextrous means to be able to use your left and your right hand together. So I'm talking about the multifaceted um, relatability of the word of God. What's this with English today? I have, no, I, I have no intention of doing it, please. Hallelujah. So, the the level of word that God delivers to us here is so potent that it stretches beyond every season. If you listen to it over and over again, I mean, in any season of your life, you will find help. Amen. Amen. We're talking about consciousness, right? Don't forget, we are going to within. We're talking about consciousness. And there's something I said to Dion when we're coming. I said, spiritual songs are born out of two places. Who watched that video on my Instagram? Spiritual songs are born out of two places. The first place is an overflow of the word of God. The second place is an overflow of the spirit of God. So if you stand to raise a spiritual song, you must be conscious that it is either coming from one of these two places. The first place is, scripture says, Paul says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Number one, teaching and admonishing yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So the first place the word of God is, the, the a spiritual song is born from is an overflow of the word of God. Let the word of God dwell in you, what? Richly. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. The second place spiritual songs are born out of is an overflow of the spirit. Do not be drunk with wine, wearing is excess, but be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So the second place spiritual songs are, are born out from is an overflow of the Spirit. Now, when you go to the West, Hillsong, Maverick City, um, Don Moen, Elevation Worship, you know them. You can see that their songs are born out of an overflow of the word of God. Deep lyrics, oceans. Hallelujah. Deep lyrics. But when you go to Africa, 
to the black church, you see that it is clearly an overflow of the Spirit of God. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. And you see people, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray oh. And it's not a problem. You can see there's no lyrics, but it's, it's just an overflow of the Spirit. Now, I'll teach you the balance. The plan of God is not for anyone to have one or the other. Now you see Ebuka song singing, everyone is on the floor shouting, holding one pillar, raising their leg up. The more people can even be seated down in an auditorium with an orchestra and delivering the word of God. It looks like there is no spirit. The plan of God is for us to combine the working of the word and the working of the spirit. Now this is the difference. In John chapter 4, Jesus said to the woman, now I'm entering my teaching, that the water I shall give to you shall become in you a well. Hallelujah. Springing into everlasting life. And I taught you that last week, that a water becomes first a well before it becomes a spring. The water I shall give to you, these are different forms. But don't forget he was talking about the river before. So the river is, is the water because the cup he's going to fetch from is the testament. Some other time. Hear this. The water I shall give to you shall become first in you a well. What is a well? A well is a body of water that goes or comes from deep within the earth. All right? Now, what is a spring? A spring seems to have some kind of pressure to flow out. With, would you say what? A gusher. Thank you. Now, Jesus is saying that we should not arrive at a spring without first being a well. Let the word of God first dwell in you richly. When you see people who are deep, they are not deep. Now, everyone is trying to sound like Jovinos. Everyone is trying to sound like, like um, all these people. They are trying to arrive at a spring when they have not become first a well. The word of God has to sit, sit deep within. Then anything you sp that springs out of you is springing from the well. Uh, if, if I just pour time in my mouth and I spit it out, what have I done? I just spat it out. But anything God does through you, he must first do it in you. See that anything that God gives you to drink, first sits in you. God gives you a song. Let the song first minister to you. God gives you a word. Let the word first minister to you. Let it become a well first. Don't be quick. You just hear one thing, you post it on Facebook. You hear one thing, you post it on your status. Don't be too quick. Let the water be in you. Let the river be in you. A well springing into everlasting life. Hallelujah. And that's how we began from the teaching within. Tonight I'm going to teach on redirection as the major topic. But from the microcosm, we'll talk about from within. Hallelujah. From within. Please turn to somebody say from within. I've already preached like three messages already today. If you are not sharp, you will not know. I've preached like three messages. It's only it's Instagram you see it. <laughs> Amen. We have begun. There is now a new trend, but at least a good trend. It's called Instagram Christianity. All men of God have started this one minute thing. In that one minute, you can hear a whole one hour of a sermon. And trust me, it's a technology. Sometimes I listen to my videos and I'm like, did I, I am I sure I preach? Did I preach that? Why you are here is flying over your head. It's just your attention span. If you can keep your heart focused and consciousness, you catch every word. Catch every word. From within. Say from within. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. 
people have brought a new song spirit into this place. My father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Jesus gave a mystery. He says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. That is wrong because you cannot have a house, a mansion in a house. You should have a house in a mansion. That's to tell you that the mystery of within is not logical. If I begin to describe you tonight, the things that are within you, the question you will ask yourself is, what is actually me? What, what, what is me? How can all these things you are explaining be in me? It's in that mystery. You should never have a mansion in a house. You have houses in a mansion. That's how you know how as little as you are, you can contain God. For me, I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. God knew if oof. Jesus Christ. I'm trying to slow down to actually teach because I wanted to just remove this thing now and enter by the Spirit. Yes, I am in my father house there's a place for me I'm a child of God yes I am in my father's house in my father's house there's a place for me I'm a child of God yes I now, I must teach from within. Everything about life. Oh, Remy, how now? Are you good? I see your, your drink, your drink drip. Hallelujah. Everything about life starts from within. Please look up. Everything about life starts from within. I'll say it one more time. Everything about about life starts from within. Write that down. Everything about life starts from within. When you break an egg from the outside, it is the end of life. You've just killed whatever animal was supposed to sprout from there. But when you allow in the right conditions an egg to break from the inside, it is the beginning of life. Everything about life starts from within. A seed of a fruit is the life of the fruit. I hope you know that. And that is within. The strength of every tree is in the root. And the root is never above. It's always within. If you see a root that says, I'm tired of this, my breath fresh air. The moment it comes out of the ground, that's the end. There are some things that should always remain within. I'll explain to you. A timeless teaching. Hear this. A baby is conceived when? Where? Within. A baby is conceived within. Every conception happens within. Jesus says, when you pray, go in to your closet. Close the door. And your father who sees within. What you see on the open is made by the things which happen within. See, you can sit here, Baba. I was telling my brother today, sometimes prayer is not lagadobara. I'll teach you guys prayer. It's not lema taba. Use your head to hit the wall and come down. You can sit down and from within elevate your consciousness and ascend. Jesus says that when he was raising Lazarus, he said this prayer I make just for those who are here. That means if it was left to him, he might not have needed to speak consciousness. Talk to somebody, say from within. First John chapter 4, scripture says in him was life. First John 4, in him was life and the life 
who was the light of men. That means the light of every man is the life that is in God. I'll say it again. In him was life and the life was the light of men. That means the light of every man is the life that is in God. I'll say it again. In him was life. In him. Where was life? Where is life? In him. In him was life. In him, I'll do it in a way you understand it. In him was life. Well. And the life was the light of men. Spring. All right? All right. So that means the light of every man is the light, life that is in God. That means from what every man drinks from is that which comes out of God. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3 verse 3. Your life is hid with Christ. Where? In God. Everything about life, you will find it within. Within. Can I continue? Life and its elements are always protected. Anything that contains life and is responsible for the continuance of life must be protected. Hallelujah. It must be. It must be. Your heart is what? Where is your heart? Yeah. It is protected by what is called a rib cage. Right? It must be protected. God is the ultimate architect. And if you find him protecting something, it means that thing has the capacity to give life. Your brain is protected by what is called a skull. You know the skull has no use. The reason for your skull is not to give shape to your head or beauty. That's why you see that God didn't care how some people's skull look like. Especially those people from the east. Hallelujah. God didn't care how their skull looks like. God can give you any skull. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore. <laughs> Somebody just thought about one of your friends. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know how much weight and force it takes to damage the human skull? Do you know? Over 250 kilograms of force to damage the human skull. I mean, if you go to the gym, I pers personally cannot curl more than 40 kg, 35, 40 with oomph. I can't curl more than 45 kg. And it takes over 250 to smash your skull protection. That's why scripture says, guard your heart with how many diligence? For out of it flows the issues. You begin to have issues when you are not guarding what is within. Many people are so careless about the people they let in, about the songs they let in, about the opinions they, left, they let in. If there's anything you know about me, I'm very, my heart is very strong. You can just be talking, I'll be saying, mm, mm, mm. as soon as I leave where you are, I've formatted my memory card. You, not every opinion is an opinion. What did I say? Not every opinion is an opinion. Like my mentor said, opinions are like armpits. Everybody has one, and some of them stink. It's the truth. Opinions are like armpits. Everybody has one, and some of them stink. Last week, we, on Tuesday, we talked about the spirit of counsel here. I taught you that before any action is taken in your life, you must seek counsel. It's not out of fashion to seek counsel. Glory be to God. The formation of life is always done within. Footballers know the devil can or the opponent can dance in the midfield like Anthony. Roll, 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 roll. 
do all the legovers you want to do. So long as the ball doesn't get into your net, you are not a back. Sometimes it's not what is happening in front of you. It's, ha it's what is happening inside you. If you can conquer within, and David said to himself, I love that that uh, that one is and David inquired of the Lord David was encouraged and David encouraged himself in the Lord this one is the parable of the prodigal son he needed nobody eating with pigs had nothing to say Bible says and he came to himself and he said to himself I will arise and go to my father's house sometimes for redirection we just need to arise and come to ourselves within tonight we'll read Second Peter 1, voluminously. But before I even go there, I have some things to tell you. If we conquer the power within, why? Ah, within. You realize that you don't really have a problem. You just don't know what you already have. Hallelujah. Scripture says, all things are yours. Have you heard of that? Whether life, whether death, Without tribulation, trials, all things are yours. There's nothing that is not yours. Glory be to God. Never let the devil in. If you say that to yourself, never let the devil in. Never let the devil in. Proverbs 4, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. Your heart is responsible for what? Physically. Blood circulation right all right and the bible says that the life of the animal is where in the blood so your heart is responsible for life circulation hallelujah there are people that cannot dare come to church their heart no carry them their heart no carry them the reason why they can't come is they just feel something is just going to happen police will just catch me as soon as i come out of my house and take me back to nigeria Hallelujah. But some people here don't have permit and they are inside here. What's the difference? What's the difference? There's something I say here. Whatever you do in life, do it with your full chest. Do it with your full chest. Scripture says, that which I have greatly feared has come upon me. Sometimes things happen not because they were supposed to happen, but because you have feared them. heart is responsible for life circulation and wherever life is not circulating towards issues begin to arise it's called blood clotting i mean you saw me today in my my just i was in mufti i had just come to gone to do mounted television for one of our tenants in our apartment you know myself and my brother were in honor of our properties doing painting and all that my brother was asking me, how do you balance? This morning was asking me, how do you balance everything? I said, let's see. When you grow in God, you move from emphasis to balance. When I was younger in the faith, I would go like this, logo, baraba, logo, logo, morning till night. Fasting. End of end of term, CGP is 0 0.5. Or when I just enter a new relationship, forget God. Or maybe money just enter my pocket small. Hallelujah. When you grow in God, you move from emphasis to balance. Your prayer life is balanced coming to church is balanced your giving is balanced not seasonal every month you must have a giving system your word life your relationship with people your finances pastors that meet me for money I am almost disgusted at them because how can you carry God you are the example of course everyone can be a billionaire but you have to be an example there are men of God I love so much but I don't really listen to them when it comes to finances because they don't have the result of what they are teaching. 
Hallelujah. So you must seek a balanced life. For, but that balanced life comes from within. I'll show you today in 2 Peter 1. It comes from within. So you don't have blood clots. When you have blood clots, you have life clots. And when life clots happens, you have issues. Issues. Many times it is when issues arise, people now give focus to that direction. Your finances have already gone low. That's when you are not trying to focus on it. Hallelujah. You notice, ah, I've not prayed for almost two weeks. Ah, let me go to church. Hallelujah. But your heart doesn't care. If your heart is pumping, boom, boom, boom. It is responsible for circulating blood all over your body. And I told my brother, how do I do it? No matter how much I have to do, I ensure that I still have my priesthood. Listen, this is where life starts from, within. So everything you see me do on the outside, big car, office, all of that, is powered from within. So if I, if I like we say in Nigeria, if I lose God, what is within, I can't power what is without. My life is powered from within. It was today somebody was telling me the things that when people say about me in, on the street, that after I proposed to my wife with a with the, the San Juke, the red car, I proposed to my wife with, people were now saying that that period that I, I started Yahoo and I hit big. So that's why I bought my wife a car, a diamond ring, and all the things that I did. I, will, I mean, I proposed to my wife two years ago. I'm just hearing this news today. And I said, oh, people think I do Yahoo. I said, glory be to God, because yeah, I was always doing my prayer. I said, Father, make me so rich that people would think I did, I, I did, I do Yahoo. One day in my life, I have never known. Power it from within. Hallelujah. Power it from within. Yesterday, I went to meet one man, owner of one building. I have 42 apartments, about 23,000 pounds commission there. As I saw him, I in a bam, the room in the shell, and I'm a shock shooker. And that was it. Exchange numbers, and the deal was done. From within. He just saw me, and that's all. From within. How do you power it? From within. From within. Everything that is seen were made by the things that are not what? Seen. So if you come here and you think, we are singing, Yahweh is inside me, and you think it's nothing. <laughs> You are a joker. You are a joker. The strength of everything is, of every tree is in the root. And the root is usually not seen. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Which will become the manner of some as the evil day approaches. YouTube is not church. Hallelujah. inside me Yahweh is inside me He is inside me The Lord is inside me He is inside me Yahweh is inside me Bring it up When God made man God made man what? Out of the dust of the earth Right? Come on, speak to me God made man out of the dust of the earth. And when he breathed the breath of life, did he breath, breathe it upon the dust? He breathed it inside man. Hallelujah. The breath of God was not upon dust. The Bible says God made man out of the dust of the earth and breathed inside of him the breath of life. That's why scripture says, though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed. Day by day. So don't get the mistake. You are not this. You are within. Someone say, I'm within. I'm within. That's why I love that lady, now, Emanuela, prophetess Emanuela. They say, This is not my real face. This is not my real face. I mean, when people do, when Christians, real Christians who be transformed by the word of God, do throwbacks, you will know that. People are not what you see. 
when you get married, you know, a woman can become anything with a few hundred dollars. Forget about it. Everything about death is relegated to without. Don't forget, we're talking about within and we're talking about life. Everything that dies begins to die from the outside. The last thing that dies in a tree is the root. What's the first thing that dies? The leaves, the fruit. Before you know the stem begins to wither. It's called the value of the shadow of death. It begins to. You see life seeping away. Don't worry, don't, don't worry. We'll make all of this relatable. This teaching is long. But please elevate your consciousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Listen, whether we like it or not, things around us will deplete. Amen. Things around us. In fact, your physical body will deplete. Today I was trying to do something in one of our properties and I tried to squat like this. Even me that goes to gym, all my knees went brr, brr, brr. I said, Jesus Christ. And I'm not even how many years old yet. The human flesh will deplete. But don't think that you are that flesh. Who you are is within. Glory be to God. And tonight we are going to explore redirection from within. How to arrive at competence. How to arrive at creativity. How to arrive at strength, power, wisdom from within. Today people read the books of Shakespeare. Which book did Shakespeare read? You see that people who changed the way the world lived, dressed, listen to music and all of that are people who look from within it was Solomon who said there is nothing new under the sun what will be has been if you see them write new something no 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 just say it just came from within there is somewhere everything has always existed it's called within there's a place where all things dwell in him was life and the life was the light of men in him all things cause and consist that's first john one is that john john one john chapter one verse one in him all things consist what scripture is that yeah eh? in him we live move our have our being no that's different there's a scripture all things in him all things consist just find that scripture for me quickly let's read that before we go to second peter in him all things consist Colossians 1 16. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's do that. From 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creation? By him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they are thrones, dominion, principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Jesus Christ. Jesus is loaded. But that Jesus is inside you. Hallelujah. I've set the premise so that you don't think that when I begin to talk about within, I'm talking about you. It is inside Jesus that all things are. Amen. Hallelujah. But the man who all things are inside is inside me. Oh Lord. So don't become proud, braggadocious, or be aroused by what scripture called the superfluity of nothingness. Don't get puffed up at the end of this teaching. All of these things I will talk about are possible because Jesus is inside you. Jesus is inside you. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Second Peter 1 is about to get intense. Second Peter 1. Oh Lord Jesus. Yahweh is inside me. From verse 3, he's inside me. He's inside me. He is inside me. Yahweh is inside me. One more time. He is inside me. He is 
inside me. This guy, you like pitching, eh? He's inside me. Yahweh is inside me. Hallelujah. Who is being blessed so far? Amen. So don't forget, keep your consciousness at a premium in today's teaching. I was talking with one of my colleagues. And I said to her, would you prefer to be paid a salary or would you prefer to be given authority to create your own money in a jurisdiction? I explained. I do real estate, all right? So if you do real estate, basically, we work based on commissions. We work based on commissions, all right? That means if I can rent, if I decide to rent or sell 10,000 apartments in a single month, no, nothing stops me from making a million dollars by choice. But if I work based on a salary, hear this, I am restricted to receive minimum wage, which is about 25,000 TL, which is about almost 600 pounds. Now, the 600 pounds is assured it will come every month. But there is one thing I will not have, which is power and authority. I said to her, I would rather have power and authority to determine the extent to which I will go in life. And that's what God has given to every man. God has never given any man riches. If not, you can blame God for how poor you are. God never gave any man riches. God always gave every man the power to make wealth. I'll say it one more time. God has never given any man riches. If not, he will be an unjust judge. Because scripture says that he may be justified when he judges. No man can say, God, it's because you gave me small money. That's why my life was the way it was. No. God has never given any man wealth. He only gives the power to make wealth. Now, how you are able to convert that power is purely dependent on the things that you, you will see tonight that you have to add to yourself. Oh, tonight's teaching is timeless. Verse 3. Somebody say, according. According as his divine power had given us all things. All things are given by what? Power. God never gave anybody all things. He has given power. And in accordance to power, he has given all things. <laughs> hey! All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Listen, Dion, you have everything that you need as concerns life. And hear me, you don't need anybody to pour holy water inside your mouth. You, you have everything that pertains to godliness. To attain unto God, there is nothing extra you need from without. It's all from within. But these all things you will see in scripture is broken down into components so that you understand. Hallelujah according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the word through brings to my mind a vacuum hallelujah a pipe a pipe how things are siphoned to and through it says that through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. I told you, who has all things? Not you. It is him. And it is him that is you. I can do all things through Christ who walketh in me. Hear this. Whereby are given unto us. Somebody say exceeding. Somebody say great. Somebody say precious. Somebody say promises. Hallelujah. There is a difference between a covenant and a promise. There is no promise attached to a covenant, but there is a covenant attached to a promise. I'll say it again. There is a difference between a covenant and a promise. There is no promise attached to a covenant. What that simply means is that if you don't do your part, 
I will not do my part. That's a covenant. But you see a promise is, there is a covenant that is attached to a promise. Hiya. What's that covenant? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's the covenant. And so long as God is with you, he keeps his promises. Hear this. Exceeding great and precious promise that by these, somebody say by these, by these, by these, by these, ye might be partakers of the divine nature. That means you can be, you can have all things within you and not be a partaker of what you have. It is possible. Look at Dion. Everybody look at Dion. Does he, sorry, does he look like what came out of him? No. He's too tall. His face is too strong. It's just too lanky. But within is virtue. Within is life. You can have something and if you don't use it, you cannot partake of what you yourself have. Mercy, his life today is because he's partaking of what is within him. Hallelujah. Look at it. That ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this, giving all diligence. Now, this is time for the sermon to start. Giving all diligence. I taught you at the beginning of the teaching that you guard your heart with what? All diligence. That means this is what protects what is within. It is not what... It, hey, uh, see, 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 please look up. This is what protects what is within. Your, your wealth will not come from knowledge. Knowledge will protect what your wealth comes from. Hey, uh, when you know this... Your, your wealth will never puff you up. I know where my money comes from. One place, Jesus. That's all. My money doesn't come from real estate. Real estate guards it. Oh, yeah. People have wrong perceptions. David says, I will look to hear from where comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. That's why we're singing, oh, do you are God. There is only one place our help comes from and that's God there's nothing there's nothing else so all the things that I will teach you today which you will add to yourself is not what is responsible for your upliftment Jesus is your gift is not what is responsible for your upliftment whether you are extroverted or introverted whether you are intelligent or smart that's not what is responsible Jesus is responsible but you see, you must add these things to yourself. Giving all diligence, add to your faith. But I told you, diligence is to guard. So by adding, you are guarding. That thing will sound so powerful on Instagram. It just flew over your head here. But when you hear it tomorrow, how you say, man? I was in this service. By God, by adding, you are guarding. So if you are cold, what begins to happen? You begin to put on more things. You begin to wear sweater, jacket, coat. By adding, you are guarding. Because the, your treasures must be hidden. Hear this. So all these things we will list now. Don't think it's what is responsible for your upliftment. Jesus is what is. If you remove Jesus from your life, you have nothing. Paul says, though I give my body to be born, I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and have not love, I am nothing. Because God is love. The moment God is removed from the equation, there's nothing. Job's wife told him, cause God and die. He says, what are you talking about? Though he slay me, Hallelujah. God is the strength of my life. What can man do to me? So, any man that at some point you lose God. I remember when God told me to leave here. I mean, you were in that meeting to leave Cyprus. God told me that. 
I mean, I was in a four-bedroom villa, staying with my wife. I had one whole room was for church. Two rooms I had never entered since I moved into the house. Cobwebs everywhere. I was just in one room. My brother was not even staying with me. Two cars packed worth together about 30,000 pounds. I'm good. I earned about 30,000 pounds every month. God says, stand up and leave Cyprus. I said, what? I told the guys, they put their hand in their mouth. It was not long. As soon as we finished the conference, I stood up. I said, guys, the Lord will have me leave. Because there is nothing I would rather have than he who gave me all things. Are you hearing me? It was when I, then I, I reached Nigeria. Boom. I didn't know what to do. I went to Joss. Three days, I just began to pray. And God said to me, I have opened unto you a door. If I never left, I would have never gone. I did a teaching on that. I don't know if we saw it. Yeah, there's a difference. L leave your father's house and go to a land I will show you. I explained the difference between going and leaving. You cannot go until you leave. Hallelujah. And God said to me, just like he said to Isaac, don't slay him. So God would ask for Isaac to ensure that you are willing to give Isaac so that he can give you nations. And when, he, when I went, when I arrived at I didn't sell every, anything. Oh. I did not want to sell everything, carry plenty of money. I went to Nigeria, I was only 300,000 naira. 300,000 naira. And God said to me, I've given you a door. Since that time, I can't spend 60 days in Cyprus. Where did the money come from? I don't know. I'm here today, there tomorrow, here today, there tomorrow. And then God said, it's time to plant the ministry. There are some things that will not happen. I'm telling you, you just got to obey God. God can tell you, kill the only son he used 25 years to give you. How many times have I entered my account? What, what, uh, word and worship conference, voice of the Lord conference, all those accounts, I emptied my account. The last conference we did with Pastor Ching Talk, over $10,000, gone. One day, 24 hours, <laughs> gone. I know how many months it took me to work that money. But if God will have you empty your accounts, you empty it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What I'm saying in all of those testimonies is that if you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything. Not all these things I will list here. Had given all diligence, add to your faith, guard your faith, guard Jesus. Because if you don't guard him, everything that attacks you attacks Jesus. That's why when people go through trials, the first person they blame is God. They stop coming to church. They stop praying. They stop giving. They say, which kind of stupid God is that? No, you didn't guard him. He's precious. You must guard him. Guard your heart. Amen. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. We have a lot of people who have faith but have no virtue. They have no substance. As a human being, they are not worth changing. There's what is called virtue. It is him who has called us out of darkness into the, the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. It is him who has called us unto glory and virtue. As a human being, please have virtue. You are wondering, ah, ah, my life is not even moving. What's happening? See, Papa, it's not just having faith. Believing in God is not enough. Having Jesus is not enough. You need to have virtue as a human being. Somebody say virtue. Virtue. You must have it. You, you can just look at somebody and say, this one is empty. You just know. It's not about how they are dressed. Once they open their mouth, this one is empty. No spirit of counsel. No virtue. God only listen to you and your opinion is just I always used to tell my, my elder sister, I say I'm the first born of this house she's senior to me oh. I said to her I'm the first born of this house it's not bragging I know what's on the inside of me become a person of virtue you step into a room who is this uncircumcised 
his life. That was virtue talking. It was not his size. It was not his stature. It was not his weaponry or his armory. It was virtue. Some things that you will say, the strongest things that you will say in your life will come out of virtue. The most courageous moves you will make will come out of virtue. I said to my guys here, I said, if it's the same God that did it in me, in Cyprus, you can do it to me, for me in Nigeria. Went to Nigeria, made 10 million in three months. In that economy. How? If it is God, it is true in any location. Hallelujah. The reason why you feel that the moment you leave Cyprus, your life will crumble is because you don't have virtue. If you have virtue, you know who you are. Virtue is real. Whether in Cameroon, whether in Madagascar, virtue. I step in any land, I will find a way to prosper. Because Yahweh is inside me. He's here. Virtue. So guard your faith with virtue. If you don't have virtue, you will question your faith. Because your faith will not produce anything. You must guard it with virtue. And to virtue knowledge. Some people are just empty here. There is almost no subject you can ask me on. That's why if you notice my teaching, I will talk towards music, I will talk towards medicine, I will talk towards business, I will talk towards everything. Sometimes I will just enter politics. Knowledge. Knowledge guards your faith. Like now in Nigeria, if you follow Nigerian news, you know that there is a famine coming to Nigeria now. There is a famine coming. There is no food in Nigeria. Nasarawa State, uh, not, not Nasarawa, Niger State just stopped the exporting of food to any state in Nigeria. It's now prohibited by law, knowledge. What do you do with knowledge? Is it just news to you or are you going to do something with that knowledge? So a day comes, you find yourself in Nigeria and there's no food to eat. Did you not know have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God the scripture was asking it's a scripture, have you not known, have you not heard so what are you doing with what you know knowledge should give you an edge that, that will sound really powerful on Instagram <laughs> hallelujah so people you meet them they just you, you <sighs> do you know this person, no I don't know him do you know this person? I don't know. There are people in this Cyprus that still don't know how to use a water card. And I make money off them. Because what you don't know, you will pay for. Yes. I'm not cheating anybody. You don't, okay, your water, water is not working. Give me the water card. 1,500 here. I will make it work. Pay. I didn't cheat you. Because if you had knowledge, see, 90% of the money I make in this nation is because of the things that people don't know that I do. The people don't know that I know. Do you get it? Do you get the English? The things I know that people don't know. That's how I make money. Money goes where knowledge is. If you want to make money, let me just tell you. Go to work. Go to somebody who doesn't know something. Go to where there's something you know Go and meet somebody who doesn't know it. He'll pay you for it. That's it. Some people will rent apartments from us. They don't know how to install internet. I say, internet? You don't know how to install internet? Oh, okay. No problem. <laughs> Go see. <laughs> Go see Wala. No problem. No problem. you pay for it. No cohesion, co co coercing or anything. Glory be to God. Add to your faith knowledge. Be a knowledge filled believer. Wrap knowledge around your throat. Learn everything about anything. Don't let your TikTok be, be shared. Follow people that when you are scrolling like this, is knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. If you can't do the two, if you are like me too, because I also want to know what is happening in the world. Have two accounts. May I have multiple accounts. I have one gym account. 
we I follow all the gym guys and fitness. Once I switch to that account, I've switched consciousness. Everything is gym, 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 gym. I do that 15, 20 minutes before I go to the gym. I arouse myself and it's time. I say, yes, this six pass, we must, we must have it. Hallelujah. Add to your faith knowledge. Who is being blessed? We are almost done. I hope we can finish it today. And to knowledge temperance. Now, this word temperance here doesn't mean it's, the, it's, this, it's like the same word temperature. Hallelujah. Is knowing when to be hot and when to be cold. There are people, they are just too nice to be successful. They are just too nice. They are just too nice. I, I can tell you no. Eh? And you can go home and cry. A full grown man as you are. I can tell you no. And you go home and cry. I know how to. There are people that come to my office. They say, but you are a pastor. How can you be chasing? I, I take their bag and I throw it out of the house. You don't pay the rent. You, you leave. Hallelujah. That's why I love Nigerians. If you do anyhow, you see anyhow. Do you think you can just walk up to, to, to Bill Gates and slap him? Eh? Do you think you can do it? Or you just go and see TV and say, you are mad. As if you see him. But once you see him, you say, ah, good afternoon, sir. Because if you do anyhow, you see anyhow. Jesus entered the temple. Scripture says that he made whips. Let me explain what he made whips are. Because with the whip, you have to weave it. So, while he was weaving it, he says, I will flog the living daylight out of these people. He made the whip he used. Go and read scripture. He didn't collect it from the ground. He made a whip. It's in scripture. I wish we have projector. I don't want to um, derail from my teaching. And he flogged the living daylight out of them. You have turned my father's house to a house of merchandise. You will eat daruni. And that was the end. Temperance. That's how I interpret this scripture. You can interpret it anyhow you like. You must know how to switch temperatures. Glory be to God. Elijah killed all the prophets of Baal. I hope you know that. Jesus had already won. Fire had already come down. The Bible says he took their sword and beheaded a hundred and twenty of them to ensure that nonsense does not repeat itself. Hallelujah. The next chapter, he ran from a woman. Next chapter, slaughtered a hundred and twenty prophets by head. Do you know the amount of strength you have to use to cut up a man's head? He did it 120 times. Righteous man. And he knew when to run. Temperance. Hallelujah. It's not every battle you should fight. But there are some battles you must fight. No grief for anybody. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm trying to find a way to close because we are already past 9 o'clock. And there is still a lot here. Patience. Who's, who remember when we said here, we were teaching, and we said it is good for a man to patiently wait for the salvation of the Lord. We taught that here. It is good for a man to patiently wait for the salvation of the Lord. Not every salvation is a salvation. Find the scripture for me. Psalm 100 and what? 100 it is good for a man to patiently wait. There are two things. To hope and to patiently wait for the salvation of the Lord. There are things, there are opportunities that come my way. I told you guys I was going to apply for a Turkey, Turkey visa. Everything was ready. I've gone to police, collect in and out. I've done, uh, what do they call it? Ikamek uh, Belgesi, collected student letter. I've done passports. All the documents are in our parlor. They are there. The day I was going to apply, God said, don't apply. Wait. And trust me, when I was, I was going to apply, I had nothing in my heart like, hey, they might deny me. 
in my life, I've never been denied a visa. Never. Because wherever God tells me go, I go. When he said to me, wait, I put all the paper, bundled it, and I dropped it in my parlor. Patience. Hallelujah. Obed, be patient. Be patient. Things will come at their time. You can't eat Agbalumo in Hamatan. Do you know what Agbalumo is? Nigerian cherry. These people don't know what they are missing here. What is apple? We have Agbalumo. Even when you can hear it, you know there is life in this thing, Agbalumo. You can't eat it anyhow. There is a season for it. It comes. See, and no one can touch you in your season, Dion. In your season, you are untouchable. But for some people, they think that season just means money. Unfortunately, people don't know what their season is. When I would teach season in this house, you know what season causes fruit, fruitfulness. I'm, I want to quickly close because I want to teach something entirely different next week. Hallelujah! Am I wasting your time? Hallelujah. Where are we? Where are we? We are, we, we, we are patience, right? Yes. And to patience, godliness. Godliness here is talking about the appearance of a goodly heritage. This one is talking, this one is not talking about prayer. This is just talking about the attributes that are attributed to godliness. Things like honesty, being straightforward, being clean. Hallelujah. These are just very basic things. My boss, I mean, the other day was last week. People had paid rent, paid rent, paid rent, some little money here and there. All the money that was in my hand was over 10,000 pounds. You might think it's small money now. For those that are in Nigeria, that's over 20 million naira. 10,000 pounds. It was in my hand. Even as we are talking now, he went to Turkey. Left me in charge of everything. I feel like Joseph in Potiphar's house. Left me in charge of everything except his wife. And he's not shaking. <laughs> this guy will just take all my money. If I want to collect this money, if I collect all the rent, 500 times 100. 500 times 100. 50,000. I can collect 50,000 pounds in one month. That's 100 million naira in Nigeria. I'll buy land in Banana Island. But he's not afraid because godliness. I can't look for what is not my own. I don't take what is not my own. My eye is not in what is not my own. That's why I tell people, Yahoo is not a sin, but still it is. If your Yahoo involves you collecting what is not your own, that's where the problem is. There are Yahoo people that trust me. Why? Godliness. One guy saw me one day. He said, I believe your government. <laughs> I gave you my five. I don't shake I say, say to me, I, I believe your government. They know. Build a reputation of godliness. It will guard your faith. It will guard the Jesus you already have. The all things, the wealth, everything. Add godliness to it. I swear to you. That's why you never find wisdom my cross. Never. Any country, doesn't matter whether I'm going to Joss, Plateau State, that's how I'm my cross is here. You know. It's not for fashion. Hallelujah. It's the mark. There's one guy, one of some of my landlords, they know me. They say this one is from the Kimise. And when, when you protrude yourself as a man of God, they expect something of you that at least you are straightforward. At least. And that coating itself gives you advantage, but you don't know. The people know they can trust you. There's nothing they cannot entrust to you. Instagram will be at our 
people know they can trust you. There's nothing they cannot entrust you. And access is always greater than ownership. I'm touching that. Access is always greater than ownership. You see me drive this car today, drive this one tomorrow. There's no car I'm not driving on this island. When I was here, I was driving a CLA. Today I'm driving a BMW. Tomorrow I'm driving a Honda. The other day I'm driving this one. How many of them are mine? Access. When people look at me, they know this one is worth more than a Mercedes Benz. Access. There's nobody's car I cannot collect and drive. It's not possible. If I know you, you know me. Do you get what I'm talking about? Tomorrow you can see me in a. There's one guy. There's one guy that gave me this BMW i8, the one that has butterfly doors. I8, yes. But well, he has left the island now. He was the first one to buy an I8. He was my guy. He was a Bini man. Bini guy. I drove that car. I was with Hagi that day. I drove it. I say, I've joined the people that have driven I8. Glory be to God. I don't have to own it. Access. And people trust you because of godliness. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I need to live. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. You just need to be somebody's guy. I don't, I don't know how to interpret this scripture. Brotherly kindness. Just have good relationship with human beings. It will help your faith. When I talk about your faith, I'm talking about the Jesus that has all things that is in you, that is responsible for giving you all things. Not brotherly kindness that is giving you all things. It's Jesus. But when you guard it, when you add brotherly kindness, you guard it. Oh God, this teaching is timeless. It's not diligence. It's not godliness. It's not patience that is giving you anything. Jesus is everything. These things, you add to it to guard what you already have. The day that the enemy attacks your patience, you still have brotherly kindness. Oh, God. My car is in Lefusha now. I have to collect it. The sensors are not working. About 1,700 pounds, 6,000 here. I have to pick my car from Honda. I don't have the cash flow now to do it. One of my guys, that's his car I'm driving now. BMW Sport 2015. That's what I'm driving now. Until I'm ready to pick my car, I have another car. Because the day the devil attacks your patience, at least there's brotherly kindness. Do you get what I'm talking about? When one element seeks to destroy your faith, you've already guarded it with too much. Hallelujah. I'm preaching good. I'm preaching better than you are saying amen. Where are we? Brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Ah. There are things helping people will do for you that you can never do to yourself. Little things, acts of kindness. Little, very little things. One day it will just compound. When the cloud is full, scripture says they empty themselves upon the earth. It's like contribution. Do you want to call contribution in Nigeria? You just keep giving small, 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 and then it comes back to you one day heavy. Charity. Do not get weary in well doing, but in due season. When it comes to charity, there's what is called due season. You just, just help people endlessly. Don't worry. One day, somebody will help you when you're unable to help yourself. I was, I was in Cyprus. I'd come back, and then my wife was driving one of my cars in Nigeria. And one guy just swerved, went, and went past her. She lost control and had a terrible accident. My wife and my mother were in the car. The front of the car, gone. She hit, you know, these pavements that separate roads, the big, big ones in Abuja. She smashed it, the car compressed like this. This was the last two months. New car, the car was never up to one year old. It was one year, it's not up to six months. I was in Cyprus, my wife was there. My wife was driving my mom, we were going somewhere. And then the guy that caused the accident just drove off, didn't stop. Sorry, Jesus, look at the time. Can I do it? 
He just drove up after this example. I'm done. He just drove up. Is that real? He just drove up. But there was a guy who was a retired lieutenant. He was just driving behind my wife. And he saw how everything happened. While my mom and my wife came out and were, you know, crying about the car, the guy followed them. Drove and followed them, Nigeria. Followed him. Picked him and brought him back to the scene of the crime. Doesn't know us from anywhere. The guy paid every penny to fix that car. In fact, the things that were broken in the car before, he fixed it. Because when a thief is caught, he restores sevenfold. Listen, when, listen, charity compounds. One day, somebody will help you when you're unable to help yourself. Never be worried well doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I promise I'm going to stop there. Verse 8. For if these things be, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when people don't have these elements, is what causes them to either be barren or unfruitful, although they already have Jesus Christ. So sometimes redirection comes from within. All of the things that you already have are in Jesus. But you must guard them. And by guarding, you must add to yourselves. Listen, Jesus is enough. Yes. But you must add to your faith. Elements. Please stand up on your